Hello, this is Sophie Trifle with us with another Blender Quick Tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to show you how you can acquire vehicles in Blender fairly easily using this add-on. It's not a free add-on, uh, but for the price, it's not too bad. There's a light version of it, and then there's a full version of it. Obviously, the full version costs more, but you get access to everything that the, the add-on has to offer. And it's called the Transportation Add-on. This is version 2. Now I'm using for uh, Blender 2.81. Now they've made the version 4. That's for 2.9, 2 and above. Uh, but for 2.8 series, uh, uh, transportation four or transportation two is what actually works in here. And I'll leave a link of it uh, for you guys to download, so you can check it out for yourselves. But it's the same process. Go to Edit, uh, Preferences, Install. Once you download into your system, navigate to where you've installed it onto your computer or download it onto your computer. Just click on Install Add-on. Once you've done that, you just put a check in the box and that activates it. I check in the box and you're good to go. And you'll find it in the tool panel on the right side of your user interface in Blender. And here it is right here. It's got uh, several categories. And you know, for every category, there are several vehicles. For some categories, there are more vehicles than others. But it provides a lot of vehicles for you to use. There are trucks in here different kinds of trucks bicycles there's only one of those four by fours uh, emergency vehicles well, only one of those now in version 4 there are a lot more um, vehicles in that one uh, but this still has a lot of vehicles in it uh, the sedans two of those uh, the sports seems to have a lot in it which isn't bad. Uh, tractors, it's got two. But you can add the vehicles, you can make them uh, editable for animation. You can snap them to the cursor, change the car paint, uh, metallic, matte, shiny, custom car paints, add HDRI images to it because it comes with several HDRI images that you can add in the background to have reflected on the vehicle, which is helpful. And it comes with back plates too, even though the black plates aren't that many. Uh, you can use them if you want to. And it comes with a shadow catcher too, which is also helpful if you need to use that. Uh, but let's just jump right in so we can see what this add-on can do. So let's delete this cube. And we're going to scroll up and we're going to choose a vehicle. Let's choose a truck. And we're going to add a vehicle to the center. So add a vehicle and here it is now it comes in fairly quickly and it's got great topology you can look at it yourselves and see how it looks the windows look great uh, if you ever if you've ever modeled a car before which i've done in blender multiple times it's a challenge so having this add-on makes it a lot easier to uh, put cars and vehicles in your scenes without having to go through the hassle of making them yourself and the good thing about it too is that they're rigged um let me see let's make this one editable for animation because right now it isn't so if you click on it uh the rig and the vehicle are just stuck together and there's no option for pose mode at all so we're going to make it editable make it editable for animation left click on that so now they're separate the truck separate and the rig is separate and now the rig can go into pose mode so you can move it back and forth now, if we click on our vehicle, you can change the car paint. Right now, it's red. And let's go into EV. It renders both EV and cycles fairly easily and fairly quickly and fairly similar. But obviously, when it comes to the shadows and a lot of the reflective aspects of uh, the vehicle, cycles is much better. <clears throat> Excuse me. But right now, it's red. Let's click on add car paint to vehicle. It turns it to black. And kind of be careful with this because sometimes in uh, Blender, if you change the car paint for some reason, it'll give you an error message. Sometimes I don't know why it did that, does that, but sometimes, very rarely it does. But for the most part, it works fairly well as you change the car paint, sky blue. That's a metallic, you can go to matte color, add car paint, not as shiny. And the shiny version, very shiny. And if you don't like any of the preset colors here, 
if you just want your own color yourself you go down to this section click on this little uh, color bar here you can change it to say like a forest green evergreen add car paint and there it is and there's matte also add car paint shiny add car paint so you got a lot of options for the color there like I said before you can change the HDRI uh, you have a plethora, the, the, the uh, developer has brought a plethora of HDRI images that you can use in your scene. Now, you can probably use these without having to use the cars either. You can just, just add them yourself uh, to any scene you want in Blender by just clicking on any of these HDRI images for any scene. But these help to you know, give more realism to your scenes in the, when it comes to the car because the sky will reflect on the vehicle in the mirror and on, on the car paint also you can add a back plate too uh, but the key thing that I wanted to point out was the animation part and we're going to animate this car and have it actually interact with the ground now like I said before bugs sometimes happen because when we have the car interact with the ground and the ground is bumpy the car is supposed to react to the bumps. Sometimes it does it, sometimes it doesn't, but let's hope, hopefully this time for this tutorial it will do it. So shift A, mesh, plane. Let's go into top view by going to seven, scale it up on uh, overall, scale and drag your mouse. And we're going to, let me see, scale it on the Y axis, S, Y. It's gonna make a bit of a road here. Let's change our viewport here so it doesn't cause any kind of lag. And we're going to, <clears throat> excuse me, have our, keep our plane selected. We're going to edit it. Go into edit mode tab on your keyboard. Uh, w and press subdivide. And from this side menu, we're going to type in 100 because we want to have a, a good amount of bump on the ground. So 100. Enter. And we're going to close this out or minimize that. And get out of by pressing tab. Now it's still smooth. You really can't see the bumps, and of course, you have to add bumps to our plane. And we're going to go into the modifier tab by clicking on that uh, wrench icon, add modifier. And we're going to go to displace. And now it's displaced our uh, plane there, but it doesn't know or understand what kind of text textures or displacement we want to add to it. So from uh, here, you'll see it's empty. So we're going to scroll down to our texture tab here. Left click on that. Click on add new or new. Click on open and then navigate to where you have textures in, on your computer. For myself, I have it here. I'm going to click on that and open image. And now we have a, a bump here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now it's a little bit too rough and jagged for me. So we're going to press W on our keyboard and shade smooth. And it still looks a little bit too bumpy. So in order to reduce the bump a little bit, let's uh, reduce the strength. Uh, let's click in here and type in 0.5. Enter. Now it's not as bumpy. Um, let me see. Let's, let's stretch it out a little bit more on the x-axis. So S, X, and pull it out a little bit. Okay. Now hopefully this is enough bump to showcase the bumpiness of uh, the rig that we're going to use or the animation we're going to use or the atom we're going to use to cause it to go over the street. Let's make a little bit more bumpy point eight. Okay, that's that's a good amount of bump. Now, in order for us to use this net do this next step, you have to download another add-on which is free, which is the animation rig. And I'll leave a link for that for you guys to download also to try that out. Because you can add that to any car in your scene without having to use the transportation add-on at all. And I'll show you guys how to do that later on, probably in the year, hopefully. But you left click on that, on your rig here, and then you'll see it pop up, animation rig. And we're going to keep these parameters as they are, because with this rig, you can do pitches and rolls with the vehicle. If we go into pose mode, uh, we Click on our navigation, uh, our move tool here, and left click on that icon. You can see that the vehicle is going to pitch. It can pitch from side to side. 
you see it rolls and pitches, which is cool. But right now we're just going to, to have this vehicle go over the ground and hopefully it's going to interact with the bumpiness in our road. So we're going to left click uh, on the main rig. You don't have to, but left click on the main rig. And then we're going to go down. We're going to keep all this the same. You can bake the steering, bake the wheel rotation, and so on and so forth. We're going to go to the ground sensors. Now, from my own experience, the axle I wouldn't really bother with because it gives you some really weird results. So don't touch the axle at all in terms of having it censored to the ground. But go to, to the ground sensor for the front left wheel. Left click on the uh, eyedropper. Watch what happens to the vehicle when we click on the ground. It goes up because it now senses the ground. I'm going to scroll down, front right, left click on the eyedrop. It's the same process. That goes up also. Now this is, axle for the, this is for the back axle. Once again, I wouldn't mess with the axle. Funky results. But go to the back left wheel, eyedropper, left click on that. Back right, eyedropper, left click on that. Now hopefully this is going to interact with the ground. Let's see if it does. And it's not really interacting with the ground. It's supposed to interact with the ground. I don't know if it's a different kind of texture. Let's try a different texture. Because sometimes, like I said before, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But for the sake of just proving that it does work, I'm going to pick a different texture. Okay, let me click on the folder there. And we navigate down to something else. That's sometimes that's just frustrating when you <laughs> when you've done something before and it's worked. Do it again and it doesn't. Well, let's see if this works. Oh, Control Z. Let me click on the rig itself. Go back to pose mode. And let's see if this will. Okay, now it's interacting with the street. Okay, so that's what it is. If you want it to interact with a bumpy ground, you have to have a good amount of bump on your roll for it to actually interact with those bumps. Because if you look at the truck now, now it's starting to, you can see the truck, the wheels going up and down, the bed of the truck going up and down. So we're going to animate this. So I guess it's not a bug. It's just the texture that we used wasn't strong enough to show the uh, bumpiness in the truck when it went over the road. So we're going to click on the recording aspect, the auto king, so to speak, uh, for animation blender. Left click on uh, the uh, rig itself. Let's go down to 140 and move this up a little bit. And it automatically keyframes that for us. Let's go back, turn that off. End it at 140. Enter, and then let's press play. And now it's starting to see is is shaking. Now it's bumping. It's shaking according to the bumpiness of our road, which is it, that's great. That's a plus. So you have to animate the bump yourself or the movement of the truck yourself. The sensor ground sensors for the animation rig senses the bumpiness in the ground and animates it for you. So yeah. This is the, it's like a two-in-one, the transportation add-on version two, and also the animation rig that helps you animate vehicles in Blender on bumpy roads. So yeah, that's today's Blender quick tip. It's a little bit longer than I thought it would be, but hey, it's a lot of information. That's good information. And uh, once again, thank you guys for all your subscriptions and all the views because that's helped the channel grow quite a bit. Really appreciate it quite a bit. Oh, I thought it froze up. And I really thank you guys for all the support. And once again, thank you guys who have subscribed in the past. Those of you who are subscribing now and those of you who will subscribe in the future. And I will see you guys on the next one. All right, adios.